they're really excited to have Mike come over and show them the technology. And they're really excited to just be able to talk with experts. But I do see them, you know, coming around to it and allowing it here in the, you know, near future. It's gonna take about 40 minutes to get to the airport, get the plane pulled out, and then we're off. What this does is it locates wounded or deceased deer or a hunter. All right, how's it going? I'm Mike with Drone Deer Recovery. We are headed to the airport right now. I'm gonna fly myself to Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Today we are talking with the Pennsylvania Game Commission. According to one of the guys from over there, I think his name is David, he's part of a drone association and he's been talking to the Game Commission educating them you know on why drones should be allowed and he said he talked to them yesterday they're really excited to have mike come over and show them the technology and talk to them about the technology using it for deer recovery i'm really excited it's 452 gonna take about 40 minutes to get to the airport get the plane pulled out and then we're off I am excited about this because all you uh, people in Pennsylvania, I mean, there's literally hundreds, maybe thousands of people in Pennsylvania that have reached out to me that you wanted me to help you find your uh, deer that you can't find. Or the other one is people that want to do this and help hunters find their deer with a drone. So if this goes through, if we can talk to them, educate them, teach them how this is a good vital tool you know, I think it's gonna work. And hopefully they, they're like, let's do it. You know, it's not gonna be that easy, right? It's not gonna be like today I go over there and with a snap of a finger, they're gonna say, yep, allow drones. I don't see that, but I do see them, you know, coming around to it and allowing it here in the, you know, near future. So I got my drone with me. I got the TV case, got everything packed up this morning. We're taking it with us because I wanna show it to them. I, I wanna show them the technology. It's, Put hands on it. That's what I did here in Ohio with uh, our DNR. They respected that, and so yeah, that's what's up. It's uh, early morning. Here we go. Starting before five. Let's go. Let's uh, head to the airport. All right, here we are. Gonna get this thing uh, pulled out. I came up here last night, had it filled up with fuel. So she's good to go. Weather looks great. I'm excited. Uh, whew. I don't know, folks. You know, it's one of those things I've talked about it last time uh, going to Indiana. I have to do these things, you know, educate the, the lawmakers and the, the game commission on how this technology works and how it's good for the sportsmen. So it's going to take some hours out of my day but today, but it's absolutely worth it. And uh, yeah, so let's pull this thing out of here and head over there. That was a cool, quick little flight on location at the airport. Pull my drone and uh, the TV case out. We'll be out of here. I am uh, the executive director of the Pennsylvania Drone Association. It's an advocacy organization supporting all different kinds of uses for drones. I also, uh, do pretty much everything aviation in the state but i manage pretty much all the state's aviation organizations nice so i was telling them earlier that you had spoke to the game commission yesterday and things seemed to go well yeah they're they're really excited to just be able to talk with experts okay um to better understand what you know drones are uh, not what they are but you know what are the the rules of the road and or rules of the skies and yeah. and how they can be safely integrated and and regulated appropriately. Yeah, I felt like that's that's something that Indiana had questions on too. Like some of the uh, committee members, it was because they are so unfamiliar with uh, like 
the rules uh, when you're flying. So yeah, they definitely have valid questions. Oh, absolutely. And I mean, really that's the role of my organization and pilots like yourself or pilots all the way around is, you know, fortunately and unfortunately, part of the role of drone pilots is education. Yep. Um, you can't just yep. expect people to understand it and accept it. Yeah. And a lot of the times, and I'm sure especially for you in, in the outdoors world, is uh, you know they're they're fearful of new things just because they don't understand it, mm -hmm. and so if we can help them understand, they can become more accepting. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I'm excited about this meeting. So do you know what you're gonna say during your public comment? I, I'm just gonna try to educate them what it is that we do. We yep. use thermal imaging drones, but how does that work? There's a camera along with the 200 times zoom camera mounted to the drone, and we basically fly uh, grid patterns. Uh, across the property, trying to find those heat signatures and then zoom in to see if it's the, the carcass or not. But I just kind of wing it. Yeah, all right. <laughs> My only suggestion is keep it about making it legal, not about the sting operation. Oh no, yeah. I, I, yeah. Have, I have no, uh, yeah. I, I won't bring any of that out at yeah. all. I, I was able to, to like sneak in a little bit with it ironically uh, are that, they aware of it oh yeah absolutely uh, that, i mean a ton of press and they're also very aware of you how's it going commissioners my name is mike yoder i woke up this morning at 4 30 didn't eat anything and drank too much coffee so I'm a little shaky here. Um, I want to introduce Drone Deer Recovery to you guys. I'm the founder of Drone Deer Recovery. I started it 15 months ago and have over 300,000 sportsmen that have started following along on all platforms. YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, what this does is it locates wounded or deceased deer for a hunter. So uh, traditionally, dogs or a bunch of buddies walking through uh, timber. This replaces that. We use thermal imaging. There's a thermal imaging uh, camera on it with a 200 times zoom. So what we do is we identify a heat signature first with the thermal, then we zoom in on the deer to see if it's the, the hunter's deer or carcass. It is insanely accurate. I would say about 90 to 95% of the time when I go look for a deer, I am finding it if it's in the search area. Uh, I've done hundreds of them now, so very, very useful. It makes so you don't have to you know, blow out all the deer. Um, I'm not trying to introduce this to replace dogs. Like if, if guys have love you know, for a dog to track, that's fine. But what I'm here for is just to speak for all the Pennsylvania hunters. I've had thousands, maybe tens of thousands of people DM me, call me, hey, can you come to PA and help me find a deer? Or how can I do this in PA? Because I want to help hunters recover game. So that being said, I would uh, like you guys to consider making this 100% legal, a tool that the hunter can choose to use. Because as it uh, sits right now, it, uh, it's kind of up in the air. Thank you. <laughs> All right, well, that was long. Yeah. That was like three and a half hours till I got, got to speak. Um, I made it short. Honestly, I'm not feeling that well for some reason. I didn't eat this morning. I was up at 4.30 this morning, drank too much coffee, and yeah, I should have had something to eat. All right, hour and a half flight back home.